The brain is the new frontier. By connecting with the brain, we can create a new future, the dawn of the superhumans. Your brain is a map, a map full of 100 billion neurons working together to create the pathways that we use to construct our reality. Neuroscience is a focus on the brain and its impact on cognitive and behavioral functions, or how and why people think. Scientists can now use their immense understanding of how these numerous connections work together to create the new horizon of humanity. For thousands of years, as stated in Harari's Homo Deus, humans had three main problems. Famine, plague, and war. Although we haven't fully conquered these problems, we significantly reduced their causes and their implications. We now live in a world where obesity is more prominent than starvation, where you're more likely to die of old age than to die of a fatal disease, and where you're more likely to commit suicide than to be killed in a war. The question now is, what are going to be the next problems that we pose in our evolving generation? Humans are players in a video game, driven to always complete the next level. Given our 21st century character, the next level is likely to be things such as happiness, divinity, and immorality. How we, scientists now will not only strive for an upgrade in character, but to become the game master. Although this futuristic idea seems prolonged, scientists have already started conducting various experiments to commence this era of superhumans. Superhumans will be healthier. Your brain is not a computer hardware. It's malleable, it's changeable, it's flexible. After strokes in humans, the remaining healthy neurons have the ability to rewire neural connections. This incredible ability means that the brain can be retrained to possibly restore impaired functions. At the age of three, Cameron Mott started having seizures. She had about 10 seizures a day. Then, at the age of five, she was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder and meant that the only hope was removing half of her brain. Cameron Mott was put in the Kennedy Kruger Institution to work with an unusual treadmill. The treadmill was part of the, top of the hospital's innovative work researching how the working side of the brain connects with the impaired side of the body. Cameron recovered well, and she's now back in school, and her leg brace is one of the few signs of everything she's been through. What's most interesting is that most devices are on or off. With short circuits, the circuit turns off. But with Cameron, even though she had 50% of her brain, she had almost 100% functionality. This means that we can now connect with the injured brain and make it better. So if we can solve human problems, could we enhance human capabilities? Superhumans will be stronger. Superhumans will be stronger. Scientists connected electrodes into, scienti into journalist Sally Adi. She was first placed in a battlefield simulator. She described how her fear overruled her physical abilities. However, she was then placed in the same simulator, but with a helmet. The helmet was fitted with electrodes to attach to her scalp from the outside, and this enabled her to consistently control her breath and kill the terrorists one by one as if she was John Wick. All of this and her physical abilities did not change. This shows that we can turn a, super, we can turn a journalist into a super soldier. So if we can do this by connecting with the brain, what else could we do? Could we turn me into a super cook? Superhumans will be happier. In reality, the feeling of pleasure is just your brain secreting hormones such as dopamine, making you feel sensations of excitement and joy. Scientists are increasingly able to stimulate this feeling of pleasure at will. 
For example, scientists connected electrodes into the brains of several rats. This enabled them to, feel, to make the rat feel a feeling of pleasure by pressing a pedal. The rats were given a choice between the pedal and a piece of food, which is a necessity for survival. The rats chose the pedal. The rats persistently pressed the pedal until they died from exhaustion and starvation. Humans, too, will constantly seek out for the option that gives them the maximum amount of this sacred sensation. This shows that we can now connect into someone's brain and make them biologically happier, which could lead to potential cures in mental illnesses such as depression. So if we have the power to experience bliss at will, are we sure that we will use this power wisely? Superhumans will be more controllable. Scientists implanted electrodes into the sensory and reward areas of several, several rats' brains. This enabled them to control the rat using a remote control. Scientists were not only able to make the rat turn left and right, but do things they normally dislike, such as jumping from high heights. What's interesting is that the rat doesn't feel like she's being obligated to do anything against her will, or she doesn't feel like she's being controlled. If you were to ask the rat, why did you move left, why did you jump, she would simply respond, I wanted to move left, so I moved left. I wanted to jump, so I jumped. This shows that we can now, we can now control a rat without her knowing. So what does this lead to? Could we control humans' wishes without their knowing? If we obtain this remote to experience bliss at will, who will control it? Will advertisers connect to our brain to make us experience joy? Superhumans will be more elitist and inequalitarian. Imagine a revolutionary world where, like Sally, everyone is Rambo. This euphoric world seems to excite most people, but who is Rambo if everyone is Rambo? Indeed, most of the upper class will be able to take advantage of this new technology, but it leaves some people behind. We aim to heal the sick, now we intend to upgrade the healthy. This will create a cast of humans superior to others, leaving behind those that are unable to pay for adequate health care, let alone superhuman treatment. So, is taking advantage of our new neurological information to put in place extraordinarily advanced humans worth in the expense of leaving behind those that harvest our food, fight in our wars, and persistently fight for their lives? Being superhuman is about being superior to others. Who and what will decide who is superior? Will money drive natural selection? By connecting with the brain, we will be able to elevate human conditions beyond their natural states. We will create healthier, happier, and stronger humans, yet more unequal and controllable humans. How will we carve out our future? Will we use our power responsibly? Will humans prove to be a better guide for the species than natural selection has been? Thank you.